believe the figures provided by one of the most important experts on 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 this on on uh, a displacement a man called walter fernandez he says there are not less than 9 crore people who have been displaced because of one or the other development project and also also we are told that at least at least 4 crore people from this are leading the life of beggars they simply dependent upon the doles they get rather than rather than carrying out carrying out some kind of a gainful work some kind of a gainful exercise things are are fast changing now this leads to a very important question which i will like to like to take up and this question always comes in our mind whenever we are concerned with the tribal communities number one the question is these people have their own ways of living they obviously would like to preserve their ways of living it's obvious they would like to continue with the way they have been they have been living why why because it gives them security it gives them confidence and they are well acquainted with those ways of living they know how how hunting is to be done they know how fishing is to be done but it's very difficult for them to move to say for example food production very difficult for them to 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 carry out agricultural operation so something you know which which gives them livelihood and their entire life social life is situated around it so so the first thing is people want to continue with their ways of living number two second we also think in terms of their integration with the outside world in fact if you look at the tribal policy they began with isolation let the tribal people be kept as they are the policy of isolation was replaced by the policy of assimilation no no we should not keep them isolated we should rather make them a part of the outside world so that they merge with it and then came the last one which um, which also also was greatly supported by the former prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru it was the policy of integration and the policy of integration had two things it said number one let people continue with their traditional ways of living let people live the way they want and at the same time the advantages coming from the advantages accruing from the modern institutions should reach them so a situation where people are and this is a word which is used so often people are empowered empowered to take a decision to take this uh, they are free to decide what they have to do incidentally as a footnote i'll tell you this famous book written by amrita sen called development as freedom it's not development and freedom development as freedom so that it gives you freedom a freedom to to choose freedom to decide how you would like to like to live this is number two number three the third thing is after all the tribal areas have resources they may not be knowing about them there was a very famous anthropologist marshall d salins and he said the tribes are squatting this is the word used on mineral wealth they didn't know about it they had absolutely no knowledge that they were sitting on 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 this at the same time because they did not know it was it was their wealth they never made use of it obviously they did not have any technical appliance to make use of it but in one sense they were and i would emphasize this word they were vanguards of that wealth vanguards in the sense that they did not allow anyone else to come 
they were standing like security guards of that particular area. Tribal communities all over the world. It is not only a characteristic of the Indian communities. All over the world, tribal communities are non-accusative. Now, personally, I think that this applies everywhere. You see, what is the ideology of the tribal people? The ideology is, well, the forest is there. Whenever we need anything, we'll go there and get it. It's like uh, your refrigerator in your house. The refrigerator is full with food. You don't eat everything every time. Whenever the need will be, you'll open the door, take out the thing, eat it, and uh, close it. It is almost, if you take this analogy, it was like this, that this is where everything is available. Go and, uh, and eat it. And whatever is being given to you, you should be profoundly respectable to them, respectful to them, profoundly respectful to them. That is why the second characteristic you find in tribal people is, is their, their admiration, their attachment to the resources around. Nothing should be wasted. Often we see tribal people living with very few personal effects. By personal effect, we mean the things which we carry. You go to any middle class house, sorry to say, any middle class house, you open the Elmira, there's a mountain of clothes which will come on you. We are always buying. You go to any market, people are doing two things all over the world. Wherever I have traveled, they are buying or they're eating. I was just telling uh, the Honorable uh, uh, Mukhopadhyay Sahib that we eat not because we are hungry, but because, just because food is available. And we have some kind of, maybe some biological reason for this, some kind of vengeance. Huh? If the food is there, how can it survive on the plate? It must go in my stomach. Hmm? So we start eating, although the, the, the hunger may not be there. So in the same way, in the same way, this accusativeness, which is a product of, uh, of capitalism and something which is going on, we want to acquire. We are unhappy with what we have. We are not happy with our lot. We always want to change. We are not happy with the shirt we are wearing. Another shirt is, is to be needed. Look at the number of chappals in the house. Charity begins at home. Observe the house in which you live. Observe the behavior of people in your house. What I am telling you is from the observations I conducted on my wife, on my daughter, on my son. Huh? And they are, they are all telling me, if it is happening in my house, it must be happening in your house as well. Now that kind of a thing is not there. And that was the reason that many of the people who wrote on tribal people, they went to the extent of saying that they are poor, they are penurious. Uh, they didn't understand that uh, having fewer belongings is a part of their life. And to put the anthropological concept, it is their cultural value. They value it. Fewer things. Like I give an example. And this example comes from the famous work of, I think, at the most of you may be familiar, Margaret Mead. She was a very famous American anthropologist. She found that the Samoans go, the people whom, with whom she worked, they go to the, to the seashore, catch fish, come back, eat the fish, collect the bones, go back to the same, same sh you know, shore, make a pit, keep the bones there, which they have not been able to eat, keep the bones there, cover it with sand, and in a ritual manner, please pay attention to this, in a ritual manner they tell the fish, thank you very much. You came to our rescue. Had you not come, I would have died of hunger. Please go back from where you came. Thanks a lot. Now that kind of a respectful attitude, that is why 
if there are any communities in the world which worship the earth, symbolizing the earth as the mother, the tribal people. You know, for, for several decades, the Baigas of Madhya Pradesh, they did not want to take up, take up plough cultivation because they said plowing would mean lacerating the breasts of Mother Earth. This is our Mother Earth. How can we lacerate? How can the plough go? No, we will not do it. They preferred what is called shifting cultivation, where the seeds are just broadcasted and then they grow. So, so this is the kind of attitude they have. And that is why someone said that the tribal people have, that was PM Gardiner who said, tribal people have, under quote, acquired austerity. Austerity which has been acquired is a part of their, part of their living. They know they know that nature is there to help them. They know everything would be, would be available. That is why these communities do not have the notion of surplus. surplus. And that was the reason why, why Karl Marx and his colleague Frederick Engels, they said that these communities have what they called primitive communism primitive communism, the earlier form of, of communism. Most of these values survive till today. Please do not think that I am only presenting before you the figment of imagination now. No. They still survive today. However, the impact of westernization, which later on became modernization, and now what is called globalization, this has brought about the changes. And so the things are very different now. It never used to happen that when anthropologists go for field work, people would start asking for money. They would think some guest has come, someone wants to know about us, we must help him in understanding. But now it's a common practice. Wherever we go for field work, people say, number one, number one, what are we going to gain from this? How this is going to be useful? You are collecting knowledge about our styles of life. How are we going to be benefited? And number two, give us money. Give us money. And it was so endemic that two anthropologists wrote an article in one of the leading anthropology journals and said that what is this happening? You give them money and they will start giving you volumes of information. Much of it is, is the creation of their mind. It is not the, it's not the truth. They just tell you what they think. And they'll pr try to provide an answer to everything because the benefits are coming to them. The scenario has, has changed. Now, in, <clears throat> in this, or against this backdrop, backdrop, um, can I have my watch, please? Huh? This is just to have a tab on the time. What's yes, the time? time? Hmm. The time is just now. No, no, you please. It's 12. Ah. It's 12. It's 12. So I, I, I must, must uh, wind up in 10 minutes or so. No, 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 it should not. It should not just, just, just go on. Sometimes, you know, these issues are very emotional and they, they, they come up. Now, the other issue is that after all, how will the nation develop? That's a very important fact. How will we be able to provide water to everyone? How will we be able to give, give the wealth to everyone? You know, I just had a look at uh, Indian minerals at a glance. We earned some years ago 60 thousand crores from mineral wealth. Everything is being used for, for infrastructural development. And obviously in this we require 
the tribal people to be our partners. The problem comes when people are not taken into confidence. I think right from the time when the outsiders were trying to bring about a change in these communities, right from that, one issue was how to establish a dialogue with people. The word dialogue is to be underlined. How to establish a dialogue with people. Take for instance, you know, small thing, small thing that that many of the tribal communities have elaborate death feasts. And not, not just the tribal communities, the non-tribal communities as well. I did my field work in a community of Raika Rabari in western part of Rajasthan. That was my, for my PhD work. I spent a long time with these, these camel breeders. And they have something called Mosser, which is death feast. And the feast lasts for three days. Almost six to eight times food is served to the people who come to attend. And each time in the food, they give pure clarified butter. Clarified butter is for ghee. And also good variety of wheat, wheat flour. And people eat. People eat more than what they should be eating. And also they took, take some gifts home. Eventually after the feast is served, the person who has given the feast, for which he has already taken loan from um, uh, uh, a money lender, this person becomes a poor man, becomes a pauper at the end of the day. And so these feasts are really overpowering. Now, cultural values have to change. Who will change? If you start telling them, people would say, no, not at all. And that is why everything should come from within. It should come endogenously, where people realize that this is what is happening. And therefore, it was thought right from the 1930s that we should have a dialogue with the people, establish a dialogic relationship. We have to put our point of view. Let us hear their point of view. They will oppose it. You have to give the other point of view. The look, you know, this is all right. This is your feeling. But this is important for this work. Say, for example, you go for exploration. People are opposing it. They say, no, we don't want. Now, you have to tell them how this will be useful for them and also for the whole nation. Now, this is a process which is time consuming. It requires building up the courage and faith and commitment in people. It will require time. You have to build it up gradually, quite like as you do. In research, there's something called informed consent. When you work on human subjects, you need informed consent. And informed consent is not built in a day. You have to proceed in a very systematic manner so that people realize that this is what they have to, they have to, they have to do. At the same time, the point number two, that alternatives have to be provided. Well, for this work which we are doing, it may be, say, open mining, open cars, or it may be erecting a, a bore well, or it may be you know, a dam, or it may be anything. You know. The alternative. Alternative, not in terms of, one of the articles which I've given says it, not in terms of market value, but in terms of what is called replacement value. Market value is a different thing. Tribal land, because it has not been in integrated with the market, tribal land is very cheap. So if you convert it to the market, you know what has happened is, is, is that people have been given and they thought this was the best thing. You take their land 
give them monetary compensation. Monetary compensation according to the market rate, which will be measly, which will be very small monetary cont contribution. Now, what actually happened? Some, some field workers were interested in finding out what would happen to the money which people would get. You know what happened to the money? Number one, a sizable chunk of that money was given to the money lender to settle the debts. The debts they took many years ago, number one. Number two, whatever was left was used on consumption expenses, going to the market, buying something, or, or indulgence in, uh, in practices which, are, which may be very expensive. And eventually what happens is, is that they are reduced to naught. There was an anthropologist called Führer Heimendorf. He conducted a study of the rickshaw drivers, rickshawalas, in the city of Ranchi. And he reported that almost all these rickshaw pullers, we call them rickshaw pullers, I prefer rickshaw drivers, they are, they are very poor now. But just few years ago, they were the proud owners of land. And the compensation was not in terms of land. The compensation was in terms of money. He also said that many of these tribal people agreed to take the monetary compensation because, because of the intervention of the money lenders. The money lenders prevailed upon them. They take money because the money lenders thought this would be an opportunity for them to recover their debts. And so, so tribal people who are generally, it is said, tongue-tied, they don't speak much, they are, they are generally succumb to the authorities, they agree to this. And so, where is the future? They have become the rickshaw pullers. Okay? Walter Fernandez called them internal refugees. In your own country, they have become, in their own country, they have become, they have become refugees. Nowhere to go, no place to, place to go. And this has been time and again stated by the, the, the policies. The most recent one, which I think, you know, you may consult, is called the, the, the High Powered Committee Report which was submitted under the chairmanship of Virginia's Khaka. It is available, 451 pages reports or so. Now this actually says that, that our emphasis, our emphasis has been, as a very important point, our emphasis has been on development and not on protection of people. Development measured in terms of infrastructure, measured in terms of water resources, measured in terms of dams, etc. But protection has been totally left out with the result that what has happened since the alternatives have not come. What has happened? Either, possibility number one, either they have moved to urban slum and lead a life which is most despicable or else they have become become a pressure group. Who can forget the kind of tribal struggle which has been carried out in Niamgiri Hills? Everyone knows it. The whole protest which came against Vedanta. Everyone knows it. And what was the whole idea? They said, well, this is our hill. Our god is Niam Raja. This is Niam Dongar. Dongar means the mountain of law. This is our land. If this land is taken away, where will we go? What are the alternatives we have provided? And the experience has been of the tribal people, the experience has been that the alternatives promised and the alternatives delivered have a big hiatus, big gap. And therefore, there's a very strong, as all of you know, very strong evidence of tribal protests, tribal unrest, the, the
the outcome of this would be when you go for your exploration they would say no you will not carry it out because of the past experiences they have thus it is important that 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 whenever we carry out and this was my point in the earlier meetings also whenever we carry out any exploration in any tribal area we must have number 1 a background knowledge of that area that's the first thing we should know who are the people living there we must know what are the styles of living they have we must have some understanding no no one is asking you the geologists or the development planners and others no one is asking you to to look at hundreds of books from the library and move into another discipline now this is where interdisciplinary collaborations make a lot of sense really make a lot of sense many of the non governmental organizations working in the tribal area they have realized it and so what they do is the suppose they are going to work in a particular area they want to know from us the anthropologists who are supposed to know about all these all these people we have built up we have built up this corpus of knowledge we have built up this reservoir of knowledge we will be able to provide you who are the people how they live where are they distributed how they carry out their life what would be the way of establish a relationship with them how we should we should go about once we have this kind of a knowledge this kind of a knowledge we would be able to work work from within we would be able to work endogenously we will be able to work in 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 terms of their cultural values and styles of living moreover the other thing is whatever promises are made they must be fulfilled and therefore whether it is a geological exploration or the work to be done by development planners in our policies in our projects the element of protection i'll underline it element of protection should be given the priority so that we don't produce one after the other an army of destitute people those who have nowhere to go if you believe walter fernandez's information 4 crore people who are ne nearly leading a life of beggary and you have to find out you know often you know you, you when you when you park your car at the red red light just look around just see who are these children who play the entertaining role of the nuts i mean whenever you go to say for example dilshad garden or so there's so many children who will come when the traffic will stop and they will start doing acrobatics just stop for a while and find out who are they why are they doing this why this little child makes mustache and has a little uh, 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 drum and plays and dances something must have gone wrong somewhere that is why they are here and what has gone wrong the when we carry out the study we come to know what the the truth is so there are three pillars on which we can make up this entire thing why these three pillars have to be taken kept in mind because development not withstanding the fact that it has been criticized a large number of people have said that development has been a curse but what they forget is that whatever we have been able to do whatever we have been able to achieve the kind of control we have say for example on illnesses or the kind of comfort we are able to able to give they are all because of development you can't can't wish it away this is a this is a very primitive argument to say that we should be anti development hmm? there is a very strong very strong theoretical perspective which talks in terms of anti development and also it says go back to the past but surely the changes are and here is the word 
the changes are irrevocable you can't go back to the past and of course much damage has been done to these area now this is the time to think very clearly so development cannot be given up we have not to be to be so pessimistic that this kind of a middle style middle class style of living cannot be given to everyone we, we are so since it cannot be given to everyone so forget about them no that's not the thing the point is that try to give as much respectable living to everyone so these three pillars on which one can build up one's understanding and i think personally they will have some ubiquitous value universal value the first is knowledge of the other i'll put it like this very simple word knowledge of the other who they are who are the people who live and make it my humble submission in fact submissions are always humble my humble submission is that whenever you are out just go around and see when i was coming to this area i've never come i've been living in delhi for the past uh, right from my my birth never been to faridabad i mean i don't know this area and i was looking around and looking around who are the people living there what is old faridabad what is new faridabad an inquisitiveness on our part to know the other to know the other the first is to know the other before we start any work know the other and the best way to know the other is is to seek its knowledge in a capsule form i'll use the word capsule form from the experts from the experts in fact at the anthropological survey of india which i am heading these days we provide this kind of uh, a knowledge reservoir you want to know about some people will be able to say and and rather than going into academic thing because you see every every discipline has two things number one a very common man's way of saying in fact very difficult concepts you know you can state in very simple word and the other is the very technical jargonistic way of saying so we have that uh, that ability every discipline has this ability so stating all that in very simple words what what they are number 2 the second is what is called gradually building up the confidence of people making people partners involving them in the entire work so that they understand that all these things are for them as well the benefits are not only going to the outsider they are going to come to them as well in this particular way once again you would say oh my god this is going to take a long time no not at all there's something called which we have which we do it is called focus group discussion and focus group discussion fgd some of you may have heard the name it has many angles many aspect and one of them is is establishing a dialogue with people calling them in a group discussing with them stating your point of view listening to their point of view trying to provide a panacea arriving at some kind of an understanding where people are active agents where people themselves become the vanguards of development rather than those who will get the tolls of development whether they are good or not good this kind of a thing has to be built up where where you don't require much time but you only require some kind of an effort and once again people who have been dealing with these things they would prove to be very useful and the third is this the solutions which come obviously one solution would be people would be would be moved out from them how can we provide an alternative to that how much land is to be acquired in most of the development plans it has been seen time and again it has been seen the the amount of land which is acquired is much more than what is actually needed so why this why not have some kind of a judicious way of of doing if pollutants are going to come okay this should be 
handled in advance. I mean, there was, a, there was an article I read just a few days back that how in a particular village the children are having black feet because of the coal dust which comes and they have to live in that. Now you can imagine, you know, what they would be, they would be breathing. So in terms of the alternative, and there once again we have to build up multidisciplinary teams in which everyone is tied to one idea and that is sensitivity working for the people so that so that development does not become a curse rather development becomes a becomes a happy healthy exercise for everyone so that all of us are able to move up so if if one develops all should develop you know that kind of a that kind of a thing and for this we have to think we have to think in you now what has been happening till now is 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 that we only think in terms of projects and not in terms of people that's the problem projects and people rather than rather than thinking that first of all the people would come and then the project has to serve people and the people are from varieties of uh, of context and so so it should be a partnership of people and project rather than project and and people i think i'll stop here once again i am thankful to you for giving me this opportunity to to speak to you i thought that i will not say anything from the papers which are already before before you now the paper on tribes and mining which i selected for this now this is really good because this provides an entire scenario and looks very sensitively at the impact on physical environment impact on land impact on um, on air the impact on social structure how the problems of women multiply the problems of children multiply so what has been the, the the total thing but that paper does not answer how confidence has to be built it doesn't answer the question that how you can make people partners how you can have a joint collaboration and unless and with this statement i would con conclude unless you follow the advice of a man called robert chambers he said hand over the stick to people what he meant was hand over he's a i mean some of you may be knowing he is a uh, he is from the institute of development studies in sussex and he is very well known for uh, his work to the techniques of participatory research he says hand over the stick to the people you tell them that you have to to guide us you have to lead us you have to be you have to be with us never think he says never think that that the knowledge you have is esoteric the knowledge you have is something which cannot be shared with others i fear you think that it cannot be simplified don't think so people have their own reservoir of knowledge don't miss it out the only difference is that your knowledge is a product of a particular structure their knowledge is a product of a particular structure you know that's the only thing is a knowledge which is experiential knowledge something which has been built over a length of time your knowledge is a product of western hegemonic system you know so, so so to say now so so hand over the stick to them involve them and for this for this you have to bring about a change in your attitude in your behavior huh? and in your contact experiences with the with the people provided people are at the center and everything has to be seen from that point of view today today things are fast different fast changing you know all these uh, uh, economists who talk about post development they say they don't think that earth has only human beings 
this is a wrong thing. And because we only thought in terms of human beings, we have created a world where biodiversity is disappearing. Do you know, you don't see any sparrows. When I moved in the house where I'm living, every morning these sparrows will come, the squirrels will come, you know, and we'll give them food and they will stand and eat. Today you don't see. I only see pigeons and crows. You don't see other. Where have they gone? I remember when I was teaching in Delhi University, Department of Anthropology, I used to see from the place where I would teach, I see a large number of vultures. Some vultures with long neck. They are not to be seen. Look at the fruits. And I was asking uh, the person who brings fruits to my house that there used to be something called lokat. Where is it? Where is it? Sir, kya hota hai? Shehtud. I mean, we, we lived on that. Disappearing. You go to the market, you see only oranges, you see only apples, you see banana. That's all. Why this biodiversity is disappearing? You know these Niamgiri hills, they used to have hundred types of crops. And this is not again something which is imaginative. They used to have. They used to have biodiversity, different kinds of trees. All this is threatened and disappearing. Unfortunately, development has somewhere or the other commitment to homogenization, make all of them similar, which should not happen. We must celebrate diversity. I am grateful to Mukhopadhyay Sahib, to Das Sahib for giving me this opportunity and I spoke from heart because I thought that I must speak to you in a language which I think you will be able to understand. Please ask me questions and I will be very happy to answer all of them. Please ask me in Hindi as well. My Hindi is uh, fairly good. In fact, I could have delivered this whole lecture in Hindi as well. So please ask me and if there is anything you can say because for me this should also be a learning experience. I am grateful to you. I'm grateful.